Welcome to Revitalize and Replant with Mark Clifton, where we equip pastors to take their churches from declining to thriving by pointing them to a new future and a new hope. Join us weekly for encouragement and practical advice in your pastoring journey. It is the Revitalize and Replant with Mark Clifton podcast, brought to you twice a week, as a matter of fact, sometimes three. By Martha White Biscuits. No, that's that's that's, <laughs> that's a Garrison Keeler thing, isn't it? <laughs> no, or, actually, it was uh, it was uh, uh, Flat and Scruggs. Oh, that's right, Flat, Flat and Scruggs. Scruggs. His, Martha White. Yeah, Martha White. Keeler had some yeah, other. Yeah, Keeler had his own thing. Yeah, a, anyway, we have the North American Mission Board. Yeah, well, thanks to the North American Mission go. Board for for making us a, a, a group here and uh, giving us the opportunity to do a podcast and to do a podcast as we continue this series of podcasts. From Mark Halleck's office. Mark What's up, Halleck guys? At Calvary Englewood. And I'm so glad you're here, guys. This is just joy for me. You're down in my little closet of an office. We got Touchdown Jesus right here. We got it is. Mark Halleck's church runs several hundred a weekend, thousand plus dozens of congregations across the mountain states. And his basement office is about 12 foot by 15 foot. Oh, it's not even that big. And. <laughs> Has, this is a very unimpressive. It has basement windows. Yep. It has three unmatching bookshelves that came from Walmart that you put together yourself. Uh huh. It has a large painting of Touchdown Jesus that a sweet lady from this church painted years and years ago. And There's all kinds of water damage yeah, on the wall here. Um, just to say that um, this is a humble abode. It's just not very cool. No, there's nothing not cool, cool about it. Good there's segue. Cool about there this is office. nothing cool. Abs zero. And so that brings us to our topic for today. <laughs> we're going to we're going to talk about reasons to stay. In a church that's not cool. Like and this, and this is a cool church, to be honest with you. It really is. First time I, I stepped foot in this church, I thought, I, 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 could, I could come here. Yeah. I'd come to this church. Well, it's not because of the building, though. It's, Let's be honest. It's kind of shabby chic. Yeah. yeah, it is. I mean, like you've said before, like there, there, are, there are cool Southern Baptist buildings. Oh, yeah. This is not one of them. This was no. built at a weird time yeah. where you said, the, I can't remember, but. It's it was, like a bowling alley. And the, the whole, the, the, the sanctuary looks like a bowling alley, yeah. long and narrow. And the yeah. architecture says, get in, sit down, let us teach you, <laughs> then get out. There's no place to gather. Their hallways are narrow. There's stairs everywhere. Everywhere. All right. You got to have great cardiac. Our cardio, cardio to, to go up to go to church here because wherever you go, you got to go up and downstairs. That's right, that's right. So it's just your normal 1960s Southern yeah. Baptist Church yep. building, and that's where we are. But um, it, something happened during COVID. Uh, many things, Hurst and uh, Halleck. But among them was you know 30 percent. Uh, most churches lost 30 percent in attendance. Uh, many churches gained in attendance. So a lot of uncool churches, mm. the churches that were struggling. Some of their members during COVID took that as an opportunity that when things came back to somewhat normal, rather than going back to their uncool and dysfunctional church, they took that opportunity to go to the more functional and cooler church in town. Mm -hmm. Well, wait, so wait, those wait. churches Are, grew. You so you you use the word functional and cool together. I mean, so is that what makes a cool church? That it's like so. What is cool? Well, I, oh yeah, yeah. We got to describe it. This came from an article, by the way, in, in uh, for the church at Midwestern. We'll, yep. we'll attach it, Midwestern Seminary. We'll attach it. I think the cool church is the cool the church that has it has a really great coffee, really great environment inside. Looks very contemporary. Great music. Wonderful music. Yep. You know, has six flags over Jesus for the kids. You know, all mm -hmm. the cool architecture, all the cool newest stuff. Every you walk in and you just don't have to worry about it. It just feels good. Mm. Everything looks clean. Everything looks modern. Everything looks up to date. Uh, everything's of the highest quality. The video screens are the highest quality. The chairs are the highest quality. All the staff is of the highest quality. The preaching is going to be the highest quality. Childcare, they're going to check your kid in with some kind of computer chip or something, and, <laughs> and it's going to be the highest quality, right? Yep. Uh, the coffee is going to be the best. Oh yeah. You know they're going to have a barista there. Sure. He's going to write your name in the coffee. <laughs> He's going to write a scripture in the coffee when he gives it to you. And that's your scripture for the day. Uh, I mean, it couldn't be any cooler. Yeah, that's right. And when you ask people, ask you, where do you go to church? And you say, well, I go, ooh, I've heard that's a really cool church. Yeah, well, you know, I'm all about that. So so we're not talking about our churches. Oh, gosh, no. No. Because uh, for no, those we serve of us. Sanka. <laughs> We're the opposite of those. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, but yeah. but most churches are not cool. Let's face it. And no. and I would say most churches that need revitalization 
for yes. replanting are not yes. cool. That's right. Yes. And so let's let's talk about how, how do you deal with that? Mm. You know, when you're when you're you're struggling and down the street there's this cool church. How do you how do you handle that? Why why would you stay in your church? Well, I, I think what we're going to talk about today, if we ever get around to it, is probably what's the reason for staying in a church that doesn't have the best of everything? Right. Why should I do that? Why should I stay in a church that really has some tremendous needs and some brokenness? Maybe doesn't have, like I said, maybe they serve Sanka instead of <laughs> instead of Starbucks. You know, maybe they don't have uh, good music or any music. Maybe it's it's taped music, you know, or whatever. Why would I stay in such a place? What it doesn't have people my age. You know, people ask me where I go to church, and I tell them they look at me like, really? You mm. go there? Yeah. Why would you stay in such a place, Halleck? Yeah. Number one, tell yeah, me. Yeah. Well, why. number one is this: it will teach you the nature of the church. And when we talk about the nature of the church. Doctrally, we're, th- we're saying this. The church is not a place, right? It's not right. an institution. It's not a building. It's the people of God. It's the people of God, blood-bought people of God. And in this article, he says, you know, we become consumers when we see church as an institution placed in the world to meet my needs mm-hmm. instead of the called-out people of God meant to represent his kingdom as an embassy in a foreign land. He says, when we choose to stay at one of these churches, we're recognizing that we actually are here for the church, not necessarily the other way around, and that we are giving of ourselves to this people rather than only taking from it. And you know, we are so, con- I'm such a consumer of everything. We all are. Every, we all are. Every time we go to a restaurant, we're, we're making a judgment whether I'm going to come back here or not. Yeah. How's the food? How's the service? Every time I go to a retail environment, if I stay in a hotel, I stayed in one last night, it's like, you know what? I don't think I'm going to stay in this brand anymore. Mm-hmm. It's really it's really gotten run down a little bit. And I know there's some new brands out there mm-hmm. that have some really new kind, you know, these newer hotels, they don't have any carpet in the room. It's all, you know, mm. natural hard service floors. I like that because I know it's cleaner, okay? That kind of stuff. And, and you just, and a lot of these newer hotels down in the lobby they have these really cool group workspaces. Mm. So you can go down there and pretend like you're working. Yep. And so, you know, <laughs> I like that. So you, but, but church isn't that way. Right. But it's hard for us to not think of church that way. Yeah. It's hard for us not to think, well, this church offers all these really great things. And I know even when Jill and I have had those opportunities when we've been looking for a church that isn't looking for us, trying to find a church home, oftentimes the first thing I look at is sort of those those exterior things like yeah, that. Yeah. You know, what's the what's the environment feel like? What's the music like? What's rather than is God calling me to this place to be part of this place? Well what's sad, man, is that's been ingrained into us. I mean, I think when you look at the church growth movement of the 70s and 80s, I mean, the whole idea was how can we under the guise of we want to do whatever it takes. We'll do anything to reach people with the good news of Jesus. And so the whole seeker sensitive movement, I mean, is where churches, the whole idea was don't feel like a church. Yeah. We want to do everything we can so it doesn't feel like a church. Yeah. We want to feel cool. We want the music to be cool. And what happened, let's be honest, is many churches look far more like the world mm-hmm. than they do a biblical church and that's a problem. And, and what's hard is a lot of folks have leaned into that and they do it really well. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like, this is where it really comes down to convictions. I think is when we start talking about what is the church. And I would say to you as a pastor uh, leader in the church, what must drive you is not pragmatism and consumerism, but the truth of God's word and what he desires in his church. That's cool. See, if you want to know what really cool, cool is, it's doing what God wants. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's honoring him. Yeah. But that takes conviction and that takes security in those convictions because it's so easy. We're just to go with the crowd and to try to please people rather than the Lord. And if what we do is move sort of from one church to another as a (laughs) member uh, in order to find something that we really like, we're missing the nature of the church. Yes. Because as you said, You, the church is not there to serve you. You are there to serve the church. And and we need to understand the nature of the church. It's a community. It's a family. It's a flock. It's yep. a fold. Yep. And and God may have some very specific things he needs you to be there for. You're part of that specific body. But again, in North America, where you can just go from one, you know, in one city, even in, it doesn't matter where oh, you yeah. are, you can always find a church that's got a little better music, yep. a little better children's activity, a little better coffee, yep. a little better schedule a little better facility and we've got people who just we got people who do not join churches anymore 
even yeah. in Baptist churches. Yeah, yeah. Because they know that they're only going to be here maybe for a while till they, quote, find something better. Yeah, that's right. I, look, if you're a pastor, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I've, I've had conversations recently with, with an individual who, who's been attending for some time, and it's like, no, I'm not really ready to join yet. It's like, you know, okay, but so like I kind of want to keep my options open. Yeah. You know, for how long? Well, then as a pastor, you feel like you've got to perform. You've got to feel like yes. you're selling, yes. you know. We're working through the book of Acts right now. We're preaching through Acts at our church. And just this conversation, I'm, I'm just thinking about my sermon this Sunday. And, and what a different mindset you see in the early church. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, we're following Jesus to the point of death. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what I, mean? I mean, if there's, it, I mean, it, it strikes me as I'm thinking about Stephen who stoned, <laughs> mm -hmm. who preached the gospel, was killed. What Stephen would say in if he were sitting in this room with this conversation? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I do. Yeah. But we live yeah. in a world where, again, it, such, yeah. it's just we just want to go to the best place, have the That's best right. coffee, have the best That's worship, right. have the best music. But as a pastor, it helps you to know that the people who are coming to your church have that attitude already. Yeah. Right. And it's you have a responsibility through your teaching, I think, yeah. to help them understand that they're not here, yeah. that, that you're not here for them, they're here for the church. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a leadership piece of that is you, if you believe, which I hope you do, I know the three of us do, I think... If you believe, man, I believe in replanting. I believe in seeing dying churches come back to life. Um, I believe the Lord is honored in this. Then you have to help people get that vision. That's yeah. the thing. You got to help people see why is it worth it? Yeah. Why is it worth it to be part of this, to raise your kids in this church, even if we don't have six flags over, right. over oh, Jesus? Or so number one reason to stay in a, a less cool church is it teaches you the nature of church. Number two, it teaches you humility. Yeah, this is huge. It means that we tr look truly to the interest of others ahead of our own. Yeah. When we leave a church because it's not meeting all the cool needs we have and doing all the things we'd like to see it done, uh, man, we are really acting out of our own interest. And we forget about the people who remain at that church that we just left. Yep. What's more, we're failing to recognize that we've been given that unique set of gifts by God to be used in that church. Mm -hmm. Look, why do I leave one church and go to another? The only reason to leave one church and go to another, if you're not moving to another state or another location, is that God has made it clear to you that your gifts are not needed here right now. They're needed over here. It's a mm. calling. Not mm. because this church offers more things for you to engage right. in. Yeah, that's good. You understand that? Yep. And so it teaches you that this is not about me. Yeah. It's about the gospel. It's about the church. It's about Christ. It teaches me to be humble. Yeah. We have to be willing to forego our own preferences for the sake of something bigger than ourselves. Amen. Well said. All right. Yeah, and we learn so to good. do that by simply staying in a place that's yep. not cool anymore. That's right. That's not, right. The, not got the best of everything. Yep. And that's a good thing for us to learn. So good. Well, and I think you guys, I mean, I think we'd all be shocked. I, we have a, a, college, a Christian college not far from here. And just recently I was speaking there and I was challenging students. These are college kids for this very thing. Why, listen, you need to give yourselves to a dying church where you could come in and use your gifts and be mentored, be part of a multi-generational. I'm just trying to cast a vision for them. And you'd be amazed how many of them came up to me and said, man, sign me up. Yeah. Where can I go? So don't think the young people, you know, sometimes we think, man, they're not interested in this. Listen, man, they want to live for Jesus if they're believers. And so we've got to cast vision and help people see why this matters. And I think a lot of folks like humility, I hope if you're a Christian, you want to grow in humility. Yeah, that's right. You should want to grow and, into Christ likeness. And, and for way. pastors and, and laity, humility takes effort. It takes work. Mm. You, it, Prideful takes no effort at all. Ever. Right. Yep. And and but being humble takes our effort. And one of the one of the real ways God may teach you humility is to stay in a place, a church that perhaps is broken and dysfunctional that needs you. Yeah. Really, you bring something to that 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 God really wants you to be there. And it may cost you something. Yeah. I agree. You may have to look. You may have to get fed spiritually yeah. through the preaching yeah. sometimes. You know, by listening to Mark yeah. Halleck online, yeah. rather, you know, and that's okay. Do that, you know, but but stay faithful to yes, that church amen. if God has called you to be there. Amen. And aren't you thankful, Clifton, as you're saying this, I'm thinking about the 30 folks who stayed here at Calvary Inglewood. 
when they could have left. They could have left before you they came. They could have left, but right. they did what you're saying. Right. And they said, you know what? We're going to be faithful. Our kids, I mean, listen, we could go a lot of places, but they believed God wasn't done with this church. And then we see what the Lord has done here. Mm-hmm. But it's that humility of saying, you know what? Faithfulness, uh, steadiness, perseverance. These are the things that we need to be growing in. And I would say even somewhat to stay in a normative size church of less than 50. Uh, we said the median Southern Baptist Church now is 67. So half of our churches have less than 67. Let's be honest. If you're in a church of less than 67, you're not going to have the children and the youth activities. Mm-hmm. You're not going to have the level of music. That's right. You're not going to probably even have the, the level of preaching, let's be honest, that you're going to have in the larger church. So what's the reason to even stay in a church of under 60 if God calls you to be there? Well, number one, like we said, it teaches the nature of the church. Number yes. two, it teaches you humility. And number three, it teaches yep. you what? The nature of unity. Unity. Unity is not uniformity. That's right. I mean, one of the great things about church revitalization and going to a dying church is hopefully you get to see a multi-generational church at work. Yeah. I mean, the, I've, I've planted a dozen churches and worked with church planters the better part of my ministry. I've really never seen a church plant that has a huge passion and strategy to reach 88-year-old widows in their neighborhood. Wow. Right? Yeah, yeah. So a lot of times in church plants, it's a very uniform group, mm-hmm. same age, everything else. But you go to a dying church and you're trying to revitalize it and replant it. You reach some young people. You've got this mixture of generations just like you had here yeah. when you came. That's right. And it teaches us that unity in Christ is not about uniformity. Uniformity, unity and uniformity is the world can do that. That's totally right. right. Yeah. There's no big right. deal in that. Yep. But when you get multi-generations together and multi-worldviews together and multi-ethnic groups together, and they're all unified, not because of what they like, but because of who they are and who they are in Christ. That's so good. Yep. We understand that uh, the, the church has different ministries in different locations. And it's important to understand, I think, when you, when you start talking to uh, your people, that they begin to understand that your church really is cool because it has a calling. Yeah, that's you know? right. And, and so it's, you're not, the coolness isn't defined by the, the, you know, all of the, the accoutrements. That's yeah. so true. But rather it's cool because it's Christ. That's right. And, and so uh, we just finished our study at, in, on uh, spiritual gifts. And uh, it, it was amazing. I mean, just uh, I, I, I tremble even thinking about it, how people just responded realizing for the first time in their life that they actually do have spiritual gifts. And so many of them, I bet you about half of the people that I talked to about this in in depth said that I didn't know I was needed. Mm. Yeah. I didn't know I was needed. And so, and and this is the exact thing that uh, uh, the guy's about 27 years old. He's just starting in his his own business and he's he's out there. He's a go-getter. And he said, this is cool. Yeah, mm, yeah, yeah, because yeah. it met a need. Yeah, that's good. Well, Pastor, as you listen to this, you may have some people come to you, and I have, and uh, certainly have in my ministry, as we've been doing revitalization, and they said, you know, Mark, we really like here, we we really have enjoyed it here, but because we feel like our children need more, or we really prefer different kinds of music, or we just think this other church has more to offer, certainly. Pray with them about that. Be grateful for them for what they've been. But maybe sit down with them and say, well, let me. have you thought about this? Mm-hmm. That maybe what God's doing is trying to teach you the nature of the church, some humility in your own life, yeah, yeah. as well as some other things yeah. that he wants you to be aware of. So maybe this podcast can help you help people process why we there should stay here yep, yep. rather than go somewhere else. What, what benefit does it have for me? And maybe the benefit isn't the best coffee and the best music, mm-hmm. but maybe the benefit really is to teach us the nature of the church, mm. the nature of humility, mm-hmm. and really even the nature of unity yeah. uh, that we can find. So, hey, thanks for listening. We appreciate your time so and much. thanks for listening to a Not Cool podcast. Because <laughs> you could leave this podcast and go to Stetzer's podcast, you know. which is a cool podcast. <laughs> but but here's the thing. One of us is cool, of the three of us. us I'm you not know. sure which one. That's ne- well, it's not you, me. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It's neither one of us. It's actually Halleck. on Jesus, right? It's, here. It's, right Halleck. Here. Right. it's Halleck. It's Halleck himself. <laughs> By the way, you know there are 22 tennis rackets in your office? This office is, you said it was, I think it's a 10 by 12. I think this is. It's pretty small. It's a lot know, of rackets. I've got a closet that's what, bigger than this. What are the CDs this? on the wall here? What are those, those? Are all, those are actually CDs that I've done. 
Music CDs? Music CDs. Uh, oh, is, oh, does that, that include so the, cool. the kids? No, the, the kids, kids ones aren't up there. Those are other ones. Wow. Well, yeah. we got to do a whole podcast on Mark, <laughs> Alex, uh, Christian music. Oh, CCM? boy. Yeah, well, that was a former life. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, Christian music. Yeah. Well, that's Totally. Great. So, you know, when I was in radio, we would we would get, do you remember these? You'd get the big plaque, the record company would, record company would show up and they'd bring you a big plaque with a, when they reached gold record status. <laughs> yeah. They'd, and then it was CDs. They'd bring you a gold CD with yeah. a you know, picture oh, yeah. signed yeah. and everything. Yeah. Yeah. These so, are far, far from Oh, I thought that. maybe that was your, your version of that. <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> Miniature version. Kind of fun. Right. Kind of fun. Well, anyways, good to have you all here with us. Love you all. Take care. Thanks for joining us today on Revitalize and Replant. This podcast is brought to you by the North American Mission Board, where we help dying or struggling churches regain health for the glory of God and the good of their communities. If you found this conversation helpful, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform. To learn more about becoming a replanting pastor or to explore resources about revitalization for your own church, visit churchreplanters.com.